Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we explored all that we could in London, the first place that I've gone to inside of Albion. Next thing to do is explore around London. But before that, I have a level up to do. I've decided on Pestilence. Since arriving in the heavens through the avid horizon, you've contracted an unlikely illness. You're turning imperceptibly slowly into glass. The progress of the disease has halted for now, but where has it taken root? And I'm going to say beside your heart. Your breast has become translucent and allows an educational, if distressing, view of your coursing veins and thumping heart. You take pains to conceal it. And I've just written a little thing in Elizabeth's character sheet. So this is in her voice. During my 20 years in the frontier, I contracted some sort of illness, I guess you could call it. It came on so slow, I don't even know where I caught it from. My breast makes a tink, tink, tink noise when I tap it. I'm worried my chest might shatter one day. Yeah, I can imagine having a chest of glass would be... Well, you'd have to worry about it shattering, wouldn't you? Glass is so fragile. What if it shatters? What if you fall wrong? And you just hit right on your chest, right on the glass, and your whole chest just shatters. It's got to be terrifying. What if the disease starts progressing again? What if it comes back faster? It's not very comforting. This is going to give us five hearts. <laughs> I just realized how ironic it is that it gives us hearts when it's beside your heart. Five hearts and three veils. So, I don't have any particular lead that I want to follow up on. I do have a couple prospects, but they're all for places that are described as... Clockwork Sun lies a long way to the west-northwest of London. Lies a long way to the south-southwest of London. They're all a long way, and the map is bigger than the reach was, so I'm not getting to any of those in one attempt. So I'm just going to forget those and just set off in a random direction and see what I find. Let's get, I guess, as much supplies as possible. Have I mentioned that I burn more fuel the more cargo that I have? So when you're low on cargo, you kind of want, like, I don't know, maybe double the supplies compared to fuel. But when you're super full, it actually uses up fuel almost as much as supplies. I'll go with one more supplies. That should last us about a million years. The excited shriek of train whistles, the hiss of steam, the clamor of countless voices. London. Oop. That hurt. Oh, hey, I actually don't have full health. Surely I can repair myself here, right? I don't think I ever noticed that. Wait, can you not repair yourself? It, no, it's it's not an option here. You can hire on crew, but where do you repair your ship? Oh, the sapphire, steam and sapphire yards. Okay. Whew. Now we're good to go. Come on. <laughs> My freaking ship is too wide. I'm going to have to side side jet every time I come out of there. Let's just go. I mean, we could go anyway. North. Follow the tracks. Whoa, enemy? Oh, dreadnought. I wonder if, ooh, I wonder if these are more powerful dreadnoughts since we're in Albion. I'm sure we're not going to face the same enemies. There must be, I mean, some of them might be the same, but there must be different enemies here. Whoa, what is that up there? I got to focus on the dreadnought first, though. Oh, 
Huh. Is it safe to fly into that? Looks like shards of shimmering emeralds or something. Oh, this is the shards. Bully's Acre. Humble wooden coffins pepper the sky here. This is a Bully's Acre, a pauper's graveyard. There's little room for the dead in London. Wait, wooden coffins? These don't look like wooden coffins. What? Huh? Pay your respects? Break open a coffin? Absolutely not. Investigate a mysterious gleaming. Some of the coffins sparkle under a shroud of glass dust. And what's that amongst them? Something larger, winking with starlight. 60% chance of success. Yeah, I absolutely want to know what that gleaming is. Ah, failure. You lean precariously from the exterior door, reaching out with your coal shovel. At last, you make contact with the object and slowly, painfully slowly, draw it in. As soon as you see what it is, you bundle it in your coat, but too late. A stoker has already seen. Later, you examine in privacy. It's a human head fashioned from bottle green glass. Glass hair, glass teeth, glass gums. A glass mold distorting the watery light of your lamp that shines through it. A third of the head has been sheared away as if struck with something heavy. In the exposed cross-section, you can see the glass scalp, the glass skull, the glass brain. Gain 10 terror. Oh my god. Well, this plays very neatly, very, very neatly, into the thing that we just leveled up with for Elizabeth. Uh, I guess turning into glass is something that's happened to other people, too. Well, maybe we'll learn more about what is afflicting us in Albion. Oh, God, where'd you come from? <laughs> Take the spinster's pen for the nature reserve. Feels a million miles away at this point, but I am going to go back there at some point. Uh, yeah, sure. Take the pen. Oh, I see the coffins now. Do you see them? Oh god, I actually hit one. Were they there before and I just never noticed? They're so small. I mean, they look small, just because they're... Well, of course they'd be small compared to my ship. Uh, unusual cargo, supplies, engines, lockbox. Um, I want to see if I can get a charred nameplate without going through the engine's lockbox. Do you just get that by default? Let's raid the hold. Triple locked case. Chains and clasps hang like garlands across this expensive-looking case. Yeah, you do always get a charred nameplate. A... Oh, this is a new item. A cask of Navaratine gemstones. Novaratine. Novaratine gemstones. It takes bolt cutters and wire clippers and lockpicks. At least one hammer and a whole hour. But at last, it's unlocked. The case lid falls open, and out spills a scarlet radiance, slow and inexorable as red wine on a carpet. Revealed inside are a hoard of stones, red sapphire and ruby and other wilder gems. These are Novaratine, said to be the cooling sparks of creation's forge. Actually, would that be Novaratine? Novaratine gemstones? Novaratine? Yeah. I'll try to stay consistent with how I pronounce it, but I'll probably fail. So this glass, this cloud of glass is bits of the bodies in the caskets then, right? They've turned into glass and little bits have just sheared off them and formed a cloud of 
caskets and body glass. That's pretty and also grim. Oh man, our terror is pretty high. Graves. Graves as far as you can see. Oh, is that something I can say? Because I can say now. What's that church bell or something that I hear? Consider. Huh? All it did was give me terror? Wait, this is also going up. Is, is there a horror nearby? Again? It found nothing. Is my terror going up just from considering this thing? Uh... Okay. What is this? It's not often that I see levels like this above me. Usually it's all below. Oh wait, even this is actually below me. Is this? Oh, that's all my level. I thought it was above me, actually. Okay. Yeah, the light does intersect it. If it blocks your light, then it's on your level. Ah, oh, these are the graves, yeah. Floating cemeteries. Wow, just... They weren't kidding when they said that there's no room for the dead in London. Just cemeteries and cemeteries and cemeteries all around me and below me. Lee's Lays. I noticed that these cemeteries are shaped in interesting ways too. Like this one sort of looks like a cross. This one over here looked like a roughly casket shape. Place is amazing. The mood here is just so somber. I feel like I shouldn't use my engine just so it can be all nice and quiet, like I'm disturbing the peace. Is a horror over there. So close to London. I, I'm actually not going to take a look because my terror is already so high. Save that for calmer times. Wow. More and, and more of them? More cemeteries? There's so many dead. What's the population of London? Another terror, thanks. Okay, and yeah, it gave you one terror, but also continues to give me terror by being near it? Why? What is it? Just like a broken off headstone or something? I wonder if this is how all of Albion is. I just realized I've come so far already. Getting to the edge of the map actually isn't going to take that long, it looks like. And I think the reason why is because the Reach. You know, if we go back to the Reach. 
you can't, there's no straight lines in the reach. If you want to get somewhere, you got to go all around. Like, I want to go from New Winchester to the nature reserve. So you kind of go like around the side and then you go up here to the left and then you hang a right and then another left. There's no straight lines. There's just so many barriers in the way. So it takes a long time to get from place to place, but so far my way north has been almost just a perfect straight line. London has left this place behind. Few come here now. Why is everything green? Ooh, station. What are you? Whoa. Unsettled dreams. Um, have I read this one before? Black of liberation and possibility, a rainbow arches across the newly empty sky in seven subtle shades, all black, of course. Yeah, I've read that before. Stars are going out one by one in my dreams. Most wise thing to do is make sense of the dream, because that uses my mirror's skill. But... I think, once again, Elizabeth wants to seek company. Once again, they go to the incognito princess. And... tell them about the dreams they had. Just like last time, they fail. They had the same dream, too. Once again... Our dreams are linked. Are you a marauder? Whoa, what is that? They look like mines, maybe. An Albion Marauder, mangled. Uh, so this, yeah, all this description stuff is going to be new for these Marauders. The Marauders are those who defy or have been excluded from Albion's authority. Leaderless raiders, homeless exiles, pirates, dissidents, and criminals. Let's strip the engine for materials. Back up to full. I don't know if this description is different. Stripping the Marauder is slow work. Its parts are ancient and much repaired. Finding suitable fits for your own engine is a process of trial and error. Ultimately, though, some is repurposed and the rest left for scrap. That really looks like a mine to me. And it's around where the Marauder was, so maybe it just left mines? Do I shoot it? Okay. Whoa. Oh, right. Right, 57 tear. Uh, they saw a frozen corpse spin past the window. Let's jettison some supplies to make an offering. Reduce terror by a little bit. I'm scared. Hmm. Well, I can't inspect it or anything, so nothing good is going to come from hitting it, I think. Let's just leave it. What is this? Look at that rock. Even the Rat Brigade shivers at the sudden cold. They steal extra bedding for their nest. This place looks so interesting. Is that a huge hole? Have they dug into this rock? Oh, 
Oh, this is a new port, so it should reduce our terror by quite a bit. The Home Bureau. The Avid Horizon consists of three parts. The Home Office, clinging to a pillar of ice. The gate, through which Londoners enter the sky, flanked by its towering statues. And the Quiet Sea, whose waters are home to those left behind. The Quiet Sea? Those left behind in the... Undersea? How do you get there, though? Can you just freely go back and forth? Through the Avid Horizon? Approaching the Avid Horizon, the very edge of the high wilderness. Hold on, let's just look at this picture for a second over here. What is that white jellyfish looking thing? The border between now and then, here and there, the skies and earth. The few lonely buildings of the port face the great gate of the Avid Horizon. Bordered by two vast winged statues, the gate towers over the shrouded sea that divides the port and the gate. The other side of the gate opens far beneath the earth, on the bleak shore of a subterranean sea. London rested there for a while, while Her Majesty was indisposed with grief. A handful of years ago, though, she led an exodus of Londoners through the Avid Horizon and into the sky. You were among them. Do you remember how you came to this place? I'm really curious what they mean by the gate towers over the shrouded sea that divides the port and the gate. Well, this is the port, obviously. The gate sounds like it's nearby. There's a shrouded sea in the sky? A memory of welcome. You fled London for a freer horizon. Escape into light. When London was underground in the dark, your beliefs were permissible. But when her renewed majesty turned her attention to the stars, tyranny grew. It would only a matter of time before the newly invigorated Ministry of Public Decency caught you. But then, as they closed in, you received a Christmas card. An invitation to winters reside in Eleutheria, where revolution has found a home. You stole onto a steamer making its way north. You survived on condensation until you reached the gate. Its statues loomed like giants. The door was open, and the space within was filled with suns and stars and light. The home office occupies a stately, albeit crumbling, manor house on the edge of an icy precipice high above the quiet sea. Once thousands passed through its elegant halls on their way into Albion. The gate is closed now, though, and has been for over a year. No one comes through, and no one leaves. Now only a skeleton crew staffs it, and only a handful of incomers remain, stuck here waiting for pardons or permissions that never came. Her renewed majesty has a long memory. Compile a port report. No one pays attention to the horizon anymore. Perhaps they should. The few bureaucrats stationed at the Avid Horizon for one departmental sin or another reside in desperate melancholy. Those detained within the fated confines of the Bureau are almost reconciled to their fate, listlessly hoping for a reprieve from London that will likely never come. Beyond the Bureau, the sea and the sky lingers like morning mist. Exiles dwell there on tethered ships strung together, dwarfed by the eternal and uncaring statues that mark the gate to a home that cannot be returned to. So it is a sea in the sky of sorts, probably not a literal sea. Tethered ships strung together, kind of... I guess a... Uh, a bit of a memory of home. Let's inquire about the sea. How can there be a sea in the sky? That's what I'm wondering. Sunlit sea. A satisfactory scientific answer has yet to be presented. Theories have sprouted like mushrooms in its place. Some say that when the gate was opened, the Untersee spilled through, filling the sky like a leaky tap fills a sink until Her Majesty's government was able to plug it. 
Others believe the sea to be, variously, the effluvia of the murdered sun, amniotic fluid to support the generation of a new sun, the fault of the Royal Society, an industrial accident covered up by one of the work worlds, the tears of her renewed majesty for her dead prince. Hmm, yes, very plausible. Present yourself at the home office. Do I really want to do that? <laughs> Protocol is everything when it comes to dealing with London's bureaucracy. Even at this outpost. Especially at this outpost. Don't really know where this is going exactly. I don't know why I'd want to present myself to them, but... Let's see. To all things a place. The acting senior... Probitor? Probitor? is responsible for monitoring all those trapped at the home office. The detainees forbid an entry to Albion with no way back through the gate. He sits behind a little desk in the echoing hallway of the manor, precisely halfway between the station entrance and the exit to the sea. He keeps three things on his desk, a wind-up clock and two battered mugs. He surveys you coolly. You're welcome to take a look around, though we have precious little in the way of diversions. You'll need a permit if you wish to sail the sea. I must ask you not to pay too much attention to the cultists. There are good reasons they were never allowed into Albion. The cultists, huh? <laughs> okay. Need a permit if you wish to sail the sea. I would love to sail the sea. So the sea in the sky, it sounds like it actually is kind of a literal sea. The shrill whistle of a kettle, a sigh of relief. Acquire access to the quiet sea, take tea. Oh wow, there's a lot to do. Uh, looks like the senior acting probator has a request for us. He's watching you from behind his desk and biting his lower lip. Clearly he has something on his mind. He does not look happy. A regrettable duty. So good you're here, Captain. He clasps your hand. His skin is cold. I've been issued an imperial pardon from London for one of our detainees here. He looks at the three nearest guests of the home office, who are following the conversation intently. Just the one, mind. Procedure demands that someone cannot be pardoned without an independent witness vouching for them. It would be highly inappropriate for me to do so. He gives you a beseeching look. If you would help, do speak to them. Those three. Return to me when you've made your choice. The Pardoner's Tale. Okay. Deal with the probator's request. You may interview the detainees and follow up on their stories before you come to a decision. Three detainees singled out by the acting senior probator have taken over one of the interview rooms. The aristocrat is contorted like a contented cat over a rumpled armchair. The courtier sits on the windowsill, a cup of tea rattling in her hands. The nun occupies a stiff-backed chair and is reading something decidedly ungodly. You may interview the detainees and make your judgment at your leisure. You could, of course, make your decision without interviewing them, but that will render your choice somewhat arbitrary. Perhaps that's in keeping with the spirit of the place. No, let's not do that. Decide in their favor. You can decide to pardon no one. Or don't make a decision for now. So it's only one pardon, right? So it's one or none of them. Let's interview the former courtier. Brilliant, magnetic, merciless, infuriating. Either her personality or her politics have kept her on Her Majesty's list of undesirables. Friends in high places. She shuts a small hand mirror as you approach. Graying, I had a lovely mane when I arrived here. Red as June, they used to say. Was hoping to see the suns, but I suppose the palace hasn't forgotten. An MP I'm acquainted with had promised it was all water under the bridge. So the MP sounds like is at the floating parliament to speak with the courtier's friend. Yeah. 
Palace hasn't forgotten, but the MP said that it was water under the bridge, so they thought that they were fine, according to this MP, but apparently not the case. So I need to go speak with this MP. Interview the handsome aristocrat. He is draped listlessly over a fated chair, occasionally playing with his hair. A question of birthright. He summons a dazzling smile as you approach. Oh, at last. My captain. May I call you my captain? He does not wait for a response. It's been a dreadful mix-up. I have a twin brother in London, you see. Terrible sort. Rather ruined my reputation with her majesty. Go to London to seek out the aristocrat's brother. Interview the nun. Surely she shouldn't be here. She lights another cigarette as you watch her. Waiting sisters. She looks down her cigarette at you and sighs. If I could have gone home by now, I would have. Nothing's worth this much bloody waiting. Pardon my imperial. I was going to stay in a covenant in the mausoleum, but that's been... Uh, that's been... What does that say? That's been... Bastard? No. I don't know what this word is actually supposed to be. But anyway, we need to go to the most serene mausoleum to find the convent the nun was traveling to. Okay, defer your decision for now. Let's take tea. There's always time here. The home office supplements its meager funds with a haphazard tea room, open for the occasional visitor. Wow, emphasis on the occasional. This place sounds basically deserted. 30 sovereigns. Not too bad. Reduced our tear. A good brew. Steeped and stewed, the tea has lingered in the home office for a very long time. An elderly detainee leans in conspiratorially. Much better than a few years back. It's improved with age. Matured. The detainee is quickly shuffled away so that you can enjoy your tea in peace. Oh, can I just keep doing that? Oh, reduce my terror again. It's the same description. You can just keep doing that. Huh. That's unexpected. Inquire about the sea. We just did that, right? Yep. Let's watch the quiet sea. You may watch the quiet sea, okay. The great glass windows at the south of the office look out on the misty waters. There's precious little else to do here. Oh, that reduced our terror even more. Fading light. Peering into the wisps of white mists that dance across the shrouded sea, you can make out a few boats drifting towards the gate. Its statues are hidden, aside from a few pinpricks of light dancing near their crowns. Below the office, the shoreline is clogged with rotten flowers and ruined offerings from the cultists that live on the sea. Perhaps they were rejected. Perhaps they were never received. Return in 15 days to see more. Acquire access to the quiet sea. London disapproves of, but does not forbid, visits 